Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Eid Moon Sighting Live with the Royal Observatory Greenwich and the New Crescent Society. My name is Jake Foster. I'm an astronomer at the Royal Observatory Greenwich, and I'm joined by my co-host, Imad Ahmed, director of the New Crescent Society. Imad, thank you for being here. It's my absolute pleasure to be here again at the Royal Observatory Greenwich with you, Jake, and we're looking forward to a fantastic evening of moon sighting. Absolutely, yeah, looking forward to it. Now, we are live on Facebook and YouTube right now, and we want you to get involved. So leave us a comment, let us know where you're watching from. If you're looking for the new Crescent Moon tonight, leave us a question if you have any questions as well, and we will be reading those out and answering those questions later on in the live stream. But now, this evening is all about the hunt for the new Crescent Moon. So, Imad, I suppose, first of all, actually, can you tell us a bit about the New Crescent Society and the work that you do? Great, thanks, Jake. Uh, well, my name is Imad, and I'm the director of an organization called the New Crescent Society. You might actually be watching right now on New Crescent Society's Facebook Live together with the observatories. And we're an organization that celebrates the relationship between astronomy, faith, and Islam. We've got a long-standing partnership with the observatory. We have a, an amazing planetarium show that we run monthly. It's, uh, it's always sold out, so check that out on the website. And of course, we have special events like this one too. And for New Crescent Society, we also have a very important or special mission, if you like, in the UK, which is to revive the practice of moon sighting for the Islamic calendar, which is what we're celebrating today. Absolutely. And for those who don't know, what is the New Crescent Moon and what is important about it in Islam? Well, I think the New Crescent Moon or the moon in general is important for everyone. Astronomy, as we know here at the observatory, is a source of wonder and uh, contemplation for all. But especially for the Muslims, the New Crescent Moon has a special significance because we commence every month by sighting the New Crescent Moon. We're currently in the month of Ramadan, mm -hmm. and we began the month of Ramadan by looking for the New Crescent. And indeed, we saw the New Crescent in Cardiff, and Cornwall, and Jersey. So we saw the New Crescent here in the UK, and we began fasting. And the month will only end once we see the New Crescent again. And so we're looking for the New Crescent, and if we see the Crescent today, it means our fast will come to an end, and the celebration of Eid will begin as soon as we see the new crescent. Fantastic. Well, we hope to see the new crescent tonight. We hope a lot of you who are watching are able to see it as well. But what actually are our chances this evening of seeing the new crescent moon? Well, if we take a look at the global visibility map for the new crescent moon, we can take a look across the entirety of the globe to see what our chances are. Now, Imab, we've got a lot of different sort of sections in this map right here. Most of the globe, sort of a lot of the northern hemisphere, including ourselves here in the UK, appear to be in this lovely bright green patch. Now, what does that mean for us? Well, this map is a lunar, predicted lunar visibility map, and it shows us where we think the moon, or the new crescent moon, will be sighted across the globe. And this dark green zone here, where we're in, and you can see the rest of uh, Europe is in, and North Africa and America, it's in this dark green, which means it should be easily visible to see. So if you're looking out today for the moon, hopefully in the UK, it should be easily visible to see. But the Islamic calendar uh, has a special feature about it, which is that it's a local calendar, which means different parts of the world might see the New Crescent on different dates. And it's perfectly normal, scientific, uh, that the moon will be seen on different parts of the world on different dates. And indeed, today, they went looking for the moon, I know for a fact, in Australia, in Japan, in Malaysia, and in Bangladesh. I know for a fact in Bangladesh they didn't see the moon. And in Bangladesh they declared, they declared because we didn't see the moon, Eid will not begin, and we're going to have another day of Ramadan. So the implication of this map really is that different parts of the world will be doing Eid on different dates, and that's perfectly normal, and it's always been the case. So people who are living in those regions, like Bangladesh, where they weren't able to see the moon tonight, will they be happy, upset? What is it a, just a matter of opinion? I think uh, for those of them who have not seen the moon and they have an additional day of Ramadan, they often feel really happy. They get an additional day of fasting, additional day of feeling, this kind of special holy month together. So 
I imagine a lot of them will feel really happy as well. But seeing the moon is a joyous occasion too. And we may see the moon here in the UK. And if we do see the moon today here in the UK, it means our Eid will begin and we'll have Eid on Wednesday. Fantastic. Well, we do really hope to see it. And I suppose for those who do see the moon tonight, or if you're looking for the moon, what are you actually going to see? What are you looking for? Well, we have a bit of a, a mock-up here of the kind of thing you might be able to see this evening looking at the new crescent moon. Now, that, blind, that, that giant black orb that you're seeing, that's not really what you're going to see. You're going to see that tiny sliver of light down the right-hand side there. That is the amount of sunlight that's currently on the near side of the moon. So you're looking for a tiny sliver of light, essentially, curving around like that. Now, the moon this evening is around 1% illuminated, so that means just 1% of the near side that we can see is lit up by sunlight. So it's incredibly thin, and it's only about 25 hours since the new moon phase, since the total solar eclipse we saw across North America yesterday. But Imad, I mean, sometimes it's a 1%, sometimes it's a 2%. How difficult is it to find a 1% moon up there in the sky? It's challenging. But I have uh, confidence that it will be seen today because we've seen such moons as well. And you've mentioned that it's about 25 hours old. It does seem quite strange to think about the age of the moon. Um, but that means how long into the orbit of the moon we are. And 25 is as young as a moon that we've been able to see in the UK. We've seen 24, we've seen close to 23 hours. But typically the moons we see are much older. So we're in kind of record region for us. So if we see the moon today, it will be one of the younger moons that we've seen, which will be great for our records. Mm. Excellent. And now, I mean, as well as that, we mentioned the total solar eclipse that happened mm -hmm. yesterday across North America. We have a, a wonderful image, actually, from the Astronomy Photographer of the Year exhibition. This actually isn't from yesterday's eclipse. This is from a few, <coughs> a few years ago. But what you can see there is the moon blocking the light of the sun there during this total solar eclipse. An incredible event. Uh, what you can see around the edges of the moon there are the sun's wispy outer atmosphere. We call that the corona. And it's really, during a solar eclipse, is the only time you can see the corona. And it's still not entirely understood. So an area of active research, actually, amongst astronomers. Wow. But wow. it is quite an interesting thing to have the sighting of the new crescent moon come just one day after a total solar eclipse. And it seems like solar eclipses have sort of a, this relevance in the history of, of Islam. What, what is that sort of relevance and importance? Of course there's a lot of relevance um, for the solar eclipse. Again, for everyone, it's a source of kind of bedazzlement and wonder for all. But there is a special thing about the eclipse in that there was an eclipse which happened during the lifetime of the Prophet Muhammad. And we have a record of that. And it's one of the earliest records we have of solar eclipses, which we have written down, that eclipse took place in the 7th century. And later, Muslim astronomers were able to use this eclipse, because of course we can date eclipses. And they were able to match the Islamic date of that eclipse, which we know from Islamic records, with a Gregorian date. And using the eclipse, we've been able to date quite a few significant events in the lifetime of the early Muslims and the Prophet Muhammad. So it does have that special resonance uh, with the Muslim world. The second thing I would say about eclipses is that they fall regularly, if you like, within the Islamic calendar month. What do I mean by that? As you mentioned, the eclipse happens during the new moon phase, which is the phase before the new crescent. And so we will typically see a solar eclipse always at the end of the Islamic month, on the 28th or the 29th of the Islamic month. And we see lunar eclipses always in the middle of the Islamic month, around the 13th, the 14th, or the 15th. So eclipses fit quite neatly into the Islamic calendar because it's a lunar calendar. Yeah, excellent. And I mean, yesterday's total solar eclipse caused a lot of excitement across of the globe. And, you know, of course, so does this evening as well. They've estimated that perhaps as many as 200 million people witnessed the total solar eclipse yesterday across <coughs> North America. 
Though, of course, far more people will probably be out witnessing wow. the moon this evening, which is incredible. And for us across the UK, we are lucky to have uh, assisting us or guiding us through this moon sighting this evening our incredible team of moon sighters from the New Crescent Society who are spread out across the UK in the hopes of spotting the New Crescent moon this evening. What we've got here are just a few of the locations where the moon sighters are spread out this evening. We've got three locations in London just alone, Greenwich, Croydon and Northolt, and we've got places spread out well across the UK from York to Blackburn to Oxford and Norwich. We've got uh, a location in Wales as well and even someone out in the Isle of Jersey, so far south that we can't even fit them uh, on this slide here. So. Imad, with so many people spread out, I guess the natural question is, why is it important to have moon sighters spread out over a large area? Well, that's a great question, Jake. What we found in the world of moon sighting in the UK is a problem which all astronomers face in the UK, which is the weather. Mm. Sometimes we find that it's cloudy in one part of the country, and what this spread allows us is, uh, if you like, a backup. Sometimes we'll see the moon in Birmingham, but we won't see it in London. Sometimes we'll see it in Cornwall, but we won't see it in Norwich, for example. But in this way, moon sighting becomes a team sport. And when we all work together, we can see the moon month on month and have a perfectly functional Islamic calendar here in the UK. You know, in the past, they didn't believe, Muslims didn't believe that you could see the moon even in the UK. They looked up and they said, gosh, it's so cloudy. But when we work together like this, when we have a network like this of moon sighters across the country, we can see the moon, but we just have to work together. And for me personally, and many of the moon sighters, this has allowed for a, a new network of friendships to grow as well. We've grown, uh, uh, we've grown together in this journey of moon sighting, so that's been a really, really special experience for us. Fantastic. Well, I'd like to draw attention perhaps to one a uh, moon sighter in particular, it is the one who is not currently on the map, as we can see there with a big question mark, and the name, the roaming moon sighter. Tell us a little bit about this person and what they are doing this evening. Our roaming moon sighter is called Junaid. I hope you're watching Junaid, and he is a real devotee to moon sighting. Every single month, he will go anywhere in the British Isles, looking for the moon. He'll be looking at the astronomical data, he'll be looking at weather reports, and he'll go where it takes. He lives in the north of England, but he'll go right down to Cornwall if he needs to, to try and get that picture of the moon. And he's quite an, uh, you know, an avid astrophotographer as well. Uh, last month, actually, which was the beginning of Ramadan, he travelled all the way down to Land's End, from where he lives, near Manchester, and he saw the moon. Mm. So we don't know where he is, right now. He's roaming around the country somewhere, but we might catch him on the live stream today. Fantastic. Yes, well, Junaid, if you're out there and you're hearing this, we hope to hear from you later on and hope you have uh, a lot of luck this evening sighting the moon. Now, here at the Royal Observatory, we were hoping this evening to also be bringing you a view through a telescope of the new crescent moon, but unfortunately the weather has not been on our side. Uh, the skies are actually pretty clear, beautiful blue skies earlier on, but it is the wind that has uh, scuppered our plans on this occasion. The winds are gusting very high speeds, which means, unfortunately, it was not safe to get our astronomer, Dr. Greg Brown, onto the roof of Flamsteed House, the top of the Royal Observatory, for risk of him bl being blown off of the Royal Observatory, which is not a, not a good look. And uh. more than not a good look, not great for Greg. But we did catch up with Greg earlier on, to talk us through what we were hoping to do, to talk us through what we would have been doing. So, here's Dr. Greg Brown to explain that now. One year later and we're here back on the top of Flamsteed House for another sighting of the new crescent moon. We've got the fantastic landscape of Greenwich in the background, our best western horizon from here at the observatory. And we're going to be using the same telescope that we were intending using last year, but the weather unfortunately stopped us. Uh, it's a uh, small four inch uh, Maxitov reflector. That means that it has a mirror at the back that bounces the light forward to the front again. Then there's another mirror in the middle of the, the, the front of the telescope that bounces all the light straight back down to what would be the eyepiece. Now in our case, of course, we're not going to be using 
using an eyepiece. Instead, we're going to be using a camera so that we can send the footage to you so you can have a live view of what the crescent moon looks like from here at the observatory. Now, we very much have our fingers crossed that the weather is going to be good. Uh, today, it's, it's not too bad, although as you can see, there are quite a lot of clouds around. But we'll hope that this evening, I will have the chance to be able to look through this telescope and find the new crescent moon for us live here from Greenwich. Dr. Greg Brown there on the roof of Flamsteed House. But unfortunately, yes, too windy for us to bring you that view from here in Greenwich tonight. But we have just heard in the past few seconds that someone has already spotted the moon this Incredible. evening. And we're only 15 minutes into our live stream. And we're not gonna waste any time. We are hopefully gonna be talking to that person right now, actually. So, hopefully, we can hear from that person in just a moment. But Imad, I mean, this seems pretty early on. I mean, is it usual to spot it? I mean, the sun set about maybe now about half an hour ago. Is now a good time to, now, to be able to see it? Now's a great time. To be honest, we never know. Sometimes we see the moon very, very early. Uh, last month, we actually had to wait for about 45 minutes before somebody saw the moon. So it's like that sometimes. Sometimes very early, sometimes it takes a bit of time. We're very lucky that somebody's seen the moon so early. I'm very lucky. Very uh, excited to find out who it is. Fantastic. Well, we have got that person right now. Okay. And I can see you. Salam alaikum. I can see who you are, Christopher. I think. I think I can't. I think you're on mute, Christopher. You have to unmute yourself. <coughs> alaikum salam. Wow. Where are you, Christopher? Tell us a bit about yourself and where you are right now. Gathering here. Wow, a huge gathering of people and tell us what's happened, what's going on? You've seen the moon, I can't really hear you Christopher, maybe if, maybe it's the reception or... We've seen the moon Wow, I can see you've got a huge crowd of people there, who are all these people and what's the emotion there right now? Everyone's very, very excited at the moment. Incredible, incredible. How, how did it feel for you to see the moon? See, there's a big crowd here. Amazing, amazing. It's absolutely very, very exciting. Amazing. Well, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to see a picture of the moon through your camera right now, but do send us a picture and hopefully very we'll be able sure. to bring it up. Which means, of course, so many, have people, so many people there have seen the moon which means that uh, we will be able to say that Eid will be tomorrow. So I'll be able to say to you, Christopher, Eid Mubarak. Eid Mubarak, Imad. Congratulations. Thanks so much, Christopher. Thank you. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Christopher. Wow. Okay, we can see a big crowd there. That was a gathering which New Crescent Society set up about seven years ago. Uh, we found a hill in West London, and they've been going like that every single month. So I'm glad that they've been able to see the moon and we can say Eid Mubarak. Eid Mubarak, that's fantastic. Uh, there seemed to be this huge sense of excitement there and sort of emotion there. Christopher looked, you know, visibly sort of uh, excited and emotional. Is, does this sort of bring an emotional reaction as well, the sighting of the moon? It's, a, it's an occasion that I've seen people brought to tears by. It is an incredible experience when you see the moon, you feel the joy just swell through your heart. Actually, do you know the word for crescent in Arabic is hilal? And the word hilal is etymologically related to the word for screaming out in joy. So you can get this idea that you'd look at the new crescent and scream out in joy. And this word is related to an older Hebrew word or Semitic word as well. So we get the word hallelujah mm -hmm. from the same root. You know, hallelujah means to kind of shout out in joy or in praise of God. So you see the moon and say hallelujah. You feel great. Fantastic. Well, uh, I, I mean, I think we should keep this sort of momentum going. I'd love to see if we've got any other moon sighters calling in at the moment, if we can, to bring them on to, uh, to have a word with us. Because presumably if it's been seen here in London, it's been seen in other places as well. Well, we're, we're, we're about to find out. Uh, just depends on the weather. But yeah, we've got a few different locations in London, so perhaps someone else in London, we're going to find out 
uh, where they've seen the moon. Okay. Fantastic. Well, we will come back to our moon sighters in a little bit later on, actually. But we would like to encourage all of you watching to keep on sending in your questions, sending in your comments this evening. Let us know if you've sighted the moon, actually, uh, as you join us this evening. But we do have a few questions that have come in. Fantastic. Okay, great. Um, first question I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put to you, Imad, actually, which is quite an interesting one. And that is, if we see the moon this evening with a telescope, but not with the unaided eye, uh, does that still count? That is a great question. Of course, we have seen the moon with, with the unaided eye. And that is a question that different Muslims have different opinions about. Some Muslims say, yes, use any kind of telescope you want. But at New Crescent Society, our ethos is we say, use all the tech and all the gadgets in the world, but we look for a naked eye or an unaided eye sighting of the moon. And uh, that's because that's the most traditional way that it's been done. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, not everyone knows how to use a telescope. They can be quite expensive. And so if we start to say, yes, you know, you can use telescopes or to begin a month, it moves moon sighting into the hands of the few and not the many. Yeah. So we like to say all you need is your two eyes and to go out and look, look into the Western horizon and there you'll see the moon. Fantastic. Uh, we've got another one that's come in here. Now, this is one that I actually quite like because it's quite a personal one, I suppose. Uh, and that's when you end your fast, what do you like to eat? Oh, great question. Muslims traditionally eat a date, mm -hmm. uh, which is a fruit from, found in the Middle East. Uh, so I love to have dates. I love to have water. I like to have watermelon. And uh, Asian, my, I'm from an Asian family background. Often we have uh, rice dishes and samosas and this kind of thing. I'll tell you what I haven't had for a long time is coffee. And now that I know that I'm not fasting tomorrow, I'm looking forward to having a coffee tomorrow morning as I've been fasting for the last month. Fantastic. Excellent. Um, now there's a question that's come in sort of about the the mechanics of what's going on here, you know, we're seeing a new crescent moon tonight. It's already been spotted, but why is it this new crescent moon that we're seeing? And we have a short animation here that can really help us to explain this a little bit better. Uh, essentially, what we are seeing uh, as we sight the new crescent moon tonight is we are seeing the moon in a very particular phase, and that is just now one day after the new moon. Of course, we had that total solar eclipse yesterday, but as the moon orbits around the Earth due to the Earth's gravity pulling on it, it appears to reflect different amounts of the sun's light, and it causes this effect where it almost seems to change shape. But of course, it's not really the moon that is changing shape. It's just a simple fact of different amounts of sunlight falling on the near side to produce the phases of the moon. Now, that full cycle lasts 29 and a half days. And, well, those different positions give us different phases. New moon occurs when the moon is in line with the sun, and as we saw yesterday, in total alignment. And as the moon continues to move around the Earth throughout the month, we get those different phases. When we get the moon on the opposite side of the Earth to the sun, we get a beautiful, bright, full moon in the night sky, and as it continues to move around, we begin to wane. That means we're losing sunlight from the near side, going through those phases. And, of course, eventually we come back down to the new moon again. And that whole process, going from new moon to new moon again, or from new crescent to new crescent again, takes 29 and a half days. But, <coughs> Imad, uh, people might wonder... Why, or with 29 and a half day cycle of the moon, how does that fit into the Islamic calendar? Well, of course, a month can't be 29 and a half days long. So the Islamic calendar will have either 29 days or it will have 30 days. And that will be determined by the moon sighting. So on the 29th of the month, and today is the 29th of the month, we go out and sight the moon. And if we see the moon, like we've seen today, we'll say, well, Ramadan has had 29 days and the new month begins. Mm -hmm. But if we didn't see the moon today, like what happened, say, in Bangladesh, they'll add an additional day, and they'll round it up to 30. 
And across the year, it will average out about half the months will have 29 days and the other halves will have 30 days. Of course, one of the features, therefore, of the Islamic calendar that a month length is variable. January always has 31 days, uh, for example, and March always has 31 days, but April has 30 days. However, Ramadan, the month of Ramadan, could have 29 days or it could have 30 days, and we never know until the 29th of the month, which is today. Fantastic. Uh, well, we've just heard as well, we've got another moon sighter oh, on the great. line who we're going to be speaking to <coughs> right about now. Okay. Oh, oh Salaam Alaikum. Yeah. How are you? How are you? I can yeah. see you. I see a smile on my face. Fantastic. Got, uh, tell us what you've seen. I can see who you are. You're Suleiman. And tell us where you are, Suleiman. So, uh, yeah, I'm in Wanstead Flats in uh, And are you uh, with a gathering of people? Who's there with you, Suleiman? I've got a gathering of uh, approximately, I would say, 100 to 150 people. Wow. Uh, parents, parents, children and grandchildren. Good variety for you. And the best news is that if one of us have seen the eyes. Incredible. You've already seen the crescent moon. Fantastic, I'm really happy for you. What's the mood, Suleiman? How does it feel? Um, it is, everyone's over the moon. Many people, they've, been, they've come here for the very first time. They've been in the country maybe 20, 30 years. They thought they can't see the, the moon in the UK. And they I think I saw someone crying. Wow. Kids are jumping up and down. Eid celebrations are starting early. We've got sweets, chocolates, lollipops. We've got uh, all these snacks given, given out to everybody. Uh, everyone's really, really happy. And they can't wait uh, for the Eid celebration to uh, start properly tomorrow. Incredible. And I can see the children behind you, Suleiman, playing with the binoculars and trying to see the moon. Fantastic news. How do you feel, Suleiman? Tell us a bit about yourself. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah um, I've been in East London all my life. And again, like many people, uh, we thought the moon can't be seen in the UK. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a concept, I think, that my parents and they're, they're from the 70s and 80s. Um, and how month in, month out, I've got moon sighting, and everybody who, similar to me, thinking it's not possible, I bring them along with me. And it's, uh, I don't know, it's a connection with uh, the, the nature, which uh, is, is a part of Islam. It's an uh, amazing feeling, uh, goosebumps, um, uh, so many emotions in one, and I can't really explain it. And a lot of people try to explain to them what it's like when they come and experience it themselves. Um, they say to me, now I understand, uh, Suleiman, what you were saying. You have to experience it to find out what it's like. Incredible. And we can feel that joy that you're describing right there, Suleiman. Thank you so much. I'm going to leave you there. And I'll say to you, Eid Mubarak, Suleiman. Mubarak, Eid Mubarak, everyone. See, ya. You. Bye. See you soon, Suleiman. And we have somebody else coming on, actually, uh, in a few seconds. Uh, but that was incredible to hear from Suleiman. He's from East London, which is where I grew up. So I feel happy that East London is being represented. And, you know, just the emotions that he was talking about. People were crying, like I said, mm. I've seen that myself. And he did say something which I would love to reiterate. There has been a myth in the Muslim community that you can't see the moon. But actually you can. And we've seen the moon today. You just need to go out, have a look, and the moon is there. Fantastic. Well, as, as well, uh, worth noting that, yes, coming from uh, in London, a lot of people don't realize just how much of the night sky you can see from London. Absolutely Even right. with the light pollution and, you know, a 1% moon, it's still completely possible to see the new crescent moon this evening from the middle of a dense city. Incredible. Yeah, and we've seen the moon in the middle of the city, in the countryside. And actually, we've got somebody on... Oh, we've got a few people on the screen. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Hi. And I can see we've, I can see we've got Uzma and Umar and a few other people. If everyone can say your names and what's happening? Do you want to see your name, darling? Fantastic. And where are you? Where are you currently located? Yeah, You're in Birmingham. Uh, so, uh, I'm sorry, I'm struggling to hear you, but Uzma, tell us, have you got any news for us? Okay, so we've seen the moon in Birmingham. Uh, we've got a clear skies and we've managed to spot it. It's 
60 people here, so we've all finished this evening. Incredible. Over 150 people gathered in Birmingham. They can see the moon in Birmingham. Can you show us a shot of your, of your surroundings, of the sky? Can we see it right now? I say he's just going to move the camera around. Oh, there we go. Okay. That's Let's it. See. I can see you've got really lovely clear skies, Uzma. Send us a picture uh-huh. of your moon and hopefully we'll be able to bring it up. I can see you've got an amazing gathering of people, people shaking hands, it's Eid. So Eid Mubarak to you, Uzma. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Uzma. Asalaamu yeah. Alaikum. Wow, it looks like there's a, quite a few gatherings. Can I say, Jake, when I began moon sighting, I, I was sometimes just the only person in the country looking for the moon. Really? Me and one friend. But as we started to teach people about new sight, uh, moon sighting through New Crescent Society, it just caught fire. People loved it. And as you can see, it's become quite a family occasion. Mm. You could see the children in all of the locations we've gone to today. Yeah. And it's really actually, I found a lot of younger people, children have driven the thirst because they've got a natural wonder mm-hmm. at looking into the sky uh, and a natural wonder for astronomy. So thank you to all of our young astronomers and moon scientists today out there looking for the moon. Fantastic. Yeah, I, I think it's worth saying as well, you know, in the New Crescent Society, you also encourage people who aren't, say, Muslims to go out and sight the moon as well, right? To get involved with the community and enjoy this experience. Of course, um, you know, I always say the moon is for everybody. Moon sighting is for everybody. And I always use that as a kind of uh, image. I tell people, you're, you're never too young, you're never too old. It's open to Muslims and non-Muslims. The moon isn't just for Muslims, it's for everyone. And I love that inclusive ethos that astronomy itself is a, an incredible symbol for. The sky is for everyone. Fantastic, yeah, absolutely. So, in just a few moments, we're going to have another one of our moon sighters on the line as well. But already so much success this evening. The moon has been sighted uh, and will continue to be sighted this evening. The moon's going to set about quarter past nine. So there's still plenty of chances to get outside and sight the moon if you haven't done so already to get involved this evening. And as well as that, if you do sight the moon this evening, let us know. Send us a comment. Uh, Send us a comment. Send us an image as well. And we've got another moon sighter on the line. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Very good, Imad. I can see that you're Yasa. This is Dr. Yasa who is uh, coming in from Cambridge. Tell us a bit about yourself, Yasa, and what's going on. Uh, so, um, we are here. There's a party of about five adults and about half a dozen children. Okay. And uh, we're in a place called Romsey Park, uh, very close to the Cambridge Eco Mosque. And uh, alhamdulillah, we, uh, we sighted the moon. The crescent moon. Congratulations. Alhamdulillah. Eid Mubarak, Yasser. I'm so happy that you've Eid seen Mubarak the moon. As well. Alhamdulillah. What, Eid Mubarak, Yasser. Eid Mubarak. What's, what's the feelings like in Cambridge? Wonderful, wonderful. It's very lovely to see the moon. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Fantastic. Uh, it's, uh, it's very nice. You know, the children are having a, a great time, alhamdulillah, uh, running around and uh, enjoying, the, uh, enjoying the atmosphere. Wonderful. Tell us a bit about yourself, Dr. Yasser. How did you get into moon sighting? Um, so I've um, had a telescope for about five years and, uh, you know, I try to um, you know, partake in as many sort of uh, astronomical events that I can. So moon sighting near Ramadan Eid is just, a, a, you know, a wonderful event to be part of, especially doing it with the family, with the community. So I also um, am quite relatively active in the local scouts and homeschooling groups. So, inshallah, you know, we're trying to revive this particular sunnah, uh, involving the community along the way as much as possible as well. Incredible. Thank you so much, Yasa. And we're going to see you soon. We're going to move on to our next moon site now. And Eid Mubarak. Thank you, Yasa. Eid Mubarak. Well, as you can see, it's, uh, like I was just saying, it's something that really appears to appeal to children and to families and I think their energy has really uh, driven the adults along on this yeah, journey. Absolutely, and so much success tonight as well. Great weather across the UK, as we've seen. 
Yeah, yeah. I've, and I've noticed so far, we've been seeing the moon in the southeast of England. We've seen it in London mm -hmm. and Cambridge. I'll be, and Birmingham, I guess, as well. Yes, absolutely. And we've got someone else on the line. Oh, fantastic. And Salaam Alaikum, how are you? Ah, Salaam Alaikum. How are I'm you? I'm fine. Alhamdulillah, very well, thanks. How Would, are you? I'm very well. Would you like to introduce yourself? I can see you're Shaquille. How are you? Yeah, Shaquille. I'm, I'm Shaquille uh, in Cardiff here. Uh, we're a bit cold, but Alhamdulillah, we've seen the moon, so it, it's all good. We don't mind the cold. Oh, amazing, amazing. Tell us a bit about uh, where you are right now, Shaquille. Where are you looking for the moon? So right now, we're in Cardiff Bay, which is uh, just outside Cardiff City Centre. We've got a group right now of, let's see, one, two, three, about six of us. Uh, so it was really good. I mean, we was a bit concerned at first that there was a patch of thick cloud uh, that we wouldn't see it. But the cloud broke up and we saw the moon through the gap. Inc and Alhamdulillah, it was great. Incredible. And can you see the moon right now, Shaquille, as we speak? Right now, we've got a, we can see the moon right now as we speak, yeah. Um, would we be able to see it through your camera, do you think? Some... Yes, inshallah. Um, if I turn my camera around, you should be able to see it. Right, let me... Well, I can yeah, see you your view. Can see if I can see your view. is very beautiful, Shaquille. I, uh, I can't... Can you see it just like over there? If you yeah. see the, the lamppost to the left, there's like a patch of cloud... Um, just above that. I, I think I can just about make out make it out, Shaquille. Oh, zoom in, unfortunately. No worries, no yeah. worries. Thank you so much, Shaquille. And Shaquille, you've been how long have you been looking for the moon for every month? Uh, I've been doing it now for approximately um, two and a half, three years, maybe. Okay, and what keeps you going every single month, Shaquille? Don't you get bored of this? No, oh, it's just uh, it's a thrill. Uh, I enjoy doing it, whether it's you know rain, snow, doesn't matter what. I'm here every month. Well, it's it's a, we're very happy to have you, and uh, we're going to say goodbye to you now, Shahidkil. Thank you so much, and Eid Mubarak to you. Eid Mubarak. Eid Mubarak to you as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow! Well, incredible. Another. Another sighting. So we can truly, truly say the moon has been seen in many different locations in, in the country. Incredible. Yeah, and we'll be talking to more of our moon sighters again in just a few minutes time. But it was interesting. One of the things uh, you ask there is, do you not get bored of this? And it's, it's an interesting question because, I mean, you've been, how long have you been moon sighting for? And, I mean, by the sounds of it, it never gets boring. It right? never gets boring. I've been going out sighting the moon consecutively for consecutive months, I think it's my 82nd moon sighting I've been involved in. Of course, I'm in the studio. I wish I was out there looking <laughs> at the moon with them. Um, but it's coming up to seven years now that the New Crescent Society has been looking for the moon. And the seven years of a perfectly functional local Islamic calendar here. We didn't even know it was possible. And just it feels so incredible to be here at Greenwich, the home of time itself, and bring in moon sighting to a much wider audience. We feel very privileged to be here. Thank you. Jim. Well, we're very, we're very proud and very happy to, to have you here with us as well, to be collaborating together. Now, maybe if you're out there moon sighting this evening, after the moon is set, maybe you want to stay out there. Maybe you want to do a little bit of stargazing for yourself. And you might wonder, what is up there in the sky this evening? Well, we can take a little look a little view of what the sky is going to look like just after the moon sets this evening, facing towards the west uh, across the UK. There are a few different sites that you can see this evening. Um, now, Imad as well. So for those who are still looking for the moon as well this evening, because uh, there, are, there are practical tips you can give to sighting the moon. What practical tips would you give them to sight the moon? And then, well, eventually we'll talk about how they, how they go out and do some stargazing as well. Well, sighting the moon is very easy. I always say even children can do it. And we've seen that as a proof today, so many children have seen the moon. All you have to do to sight the moon is watch the sunset on the 29th of the Islamic month. And that's because the new crescent moon will always emerge somewhere near the sunset. In the northern hemisphere, we normally see the moon, or we always see the moon, slightly to the left of where the sun has set. 
But if I was in Australia, I'd see the moon slightly to the right of where the sun has set. But my big tip for moon sighting is easy. Just find a place where the sun, you can have a clear view of where the sun has set. And if you don't know where the sun set can be nicely seen or easily seen from where you look, just Google it. You know, when I moved to Cambridge, I live in Cambridge now, I just typed in Google, where can I see the sunset in Cambridge? Mm -hmm. And a lot of, you know, kind of romantic people, they put up pictures of the sunset, and I found a few great locations, including the one where Dr. Yasser saw the moon from with his group there today. Excellent. Well, and you talk about sort of uh, having an idea where the sun sets. We can see here, so after the moon sets this evening, here's what the night sky is going to look like across the UK. You can see the moon setting over there, uh, sort of towards the northwest or north by northwest. Just above where the moon sets, you're probably going to see a bright white dot. That's going to look a lot like a star, but you might notice stars tend to twinkle, but this does not. That's because that is no star, that is the planet Jupiter, uh, shining brightly in our evening skies. If you look just above that, you might find sort of a little patch of sort of uh, little bits of light, but they, they look a little bit different to just the usual stars around them. That's because that is an open star cluster, a collection of stars loosely bound by gravity that we call the Pleiades, those often known as the Seven Sisters. With just a pair of binoculars, you can see those with relative ease, some seven very bright stars. Those are the Seven Sisters, and you might also see some other lesser bright stars through a pair of binoculars as well. And if you're looking for another target, turn your attention to the southwest. You might see the three bright stars of Orion's belt in an almost perfectly straight line. And it's worth saying, you can see all of this stuff even from London as well. You don't have to be out in the countryside to see this stuff. But below the three stars of Orion's belt, you might see a wispy patch of light. Looks a bit like a smudge on the sky. That is the Orion Nebula, a vast stellar nursery where at any given time we believe about 1,000 stars are being born. So there are a few easy targets for you this evening. But we are still very much within the time where the moon is still being sighted at this very moment. And we're hopefully going to be talking to more of our moon sighters, uh, well, hopefully imminently. Um, but Imad, I mean, it's already been a really successful night. I mean... What is the takeaway mood from this? Is it one of celebration? Is it one of relief? I think the end of Ramadan is always bittersweet. People love Ramadan, the communal feeling, the spiritual feeling of Ramadan. So there is a bit of bitterness, a sadness that we're leaving Ramadan. But of course, tomorrow is a day of great celebration. People will be visiting their families. The big tradition of Eid is to wear some new clothes <laughs> and to buy each other gifts like you might do in Christmas. But clothes are very, very traditional so people, you see them wearing their nicest clothes tomorrow, visiting their families. And that's, you know, a great, great tradition. And, of course, we won't be fasting tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow is actually, in the Islamic tradition, you're not even allowed to fast. You're supposed to have a meal with your, uh, you know, you're supposed to eat with your family if you can and enjoy the day together with your community. Fantastic. Uh, well, like we said, we have got someone on the line who will be speaking to in just a few seconds' time. And I believe we've got them on the line right now. I'm turning around. Hello, Salam alaikum. Well, it's very dark, but I can make out that it's Asif from Bristol. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam, Imad. How? And uh, hello to your fellow um, presenter as well from uh, the Greenwich Observatory. Hello, thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure. Yeah, um, we're in Bristol, um, in Troopers Hill, and we can confirm that we have seen the moon. In, in Bristol. That's incredible. Who are you with, Asif, right now? Uh, you know, I've had a, I've had a, uh, I've been a lone soldier for quite a while, but today we've got about a dozen people to here. Wow, incredible. So, I don't know if you can, I, I don't know if you can see my team of people. It's quite dark now. Mm -hmm. Aslan, you want to get a torch out? Aslan, alaikum salam. Wa alaikum salam. Pleasure to see you all. And tell us, what, what is the mood, Asif, now that you've seen the new crescent moon? Well, it took, um, it, it took a little while to come out, um, but we've got a clear sky, actually, so it's, um, it's, it's, it's clear, it's very clear now. I don't know if you can see. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you can't, it's probably quite difficult to see through my uh, little telescope, but... Um, 
Oh, it looks like we might have just lost Asif there, so maybe we'll move on to the uh, next caller that we have. But thank you so much, uh, Asif. Asif, like you said, uh, he was a, he called himself a lone ranger there, I think, mm-hmm. or a lone soldier. He was going out every month by himself, so it's good to hear that he's got a bit of, of a crowd with him today. Moonsight is quite infectious, so I'm pretty confident the people who've gone with him today, they're going to join him for future months. That's good. That's what we love to hear, right? Sort of building this wonderful community. Absolutely. Oh, and I'm turning around, and I'm, I can see uh, what looks like an amazing beach. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. How are you? It's Julian Shema. I'm trying. That's it. I don't know if you can see. It's there's a cloud. It's very like it's hot. I actually. There's, there's a cloud right about right here. I think I can just see the moon Shema, but it is quite blurry on our screens. Thank you so much, though, Shema. How are you? Send photographs in. You're going to send a few photographs in. Tell us, where are you, Shema, right now in the United Kingdom? Actually, it's on the sea. It's a bit dark. Great. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shema and Julie. And you've you've come in from Saltburn and Teesside. It feels a bit chaotic, like going around the country, but it's incredible that we've seen the moon in so many different locations. Thank you so much, Shema. I think you you've sent in a picture. Thank you. We both testify that we have seen the Hilal person with our eyes, big eyes. I mean, incredible. Thank you so much, and Shema and Julie, Eid Mubarak. Wow. Fantastic stuff. I guess we should explain as well so, uh, this uh, testifying that you've seen the moon. So what, what is that? What is that, Imar, for those who aren't aware? Well, uh, the Islamic calendar for some Muslims requires you to testify that you have seen the moon. Like today we can live stream the moon, we can show you an image of it, but you can imagine in the past somebody might have just seen the moon. So they have to come in and they have to stand in front of the community and say, I testify, I truly have seen the moon. And in some way, you can view the Islamic calendar as entirely built on human testimony. So I find that one of the most fascinating features of the Islamic calendar. That's why some of our scientists here today said they've, they've identified themselves, they've testified, I have seen the moon, and they've mentioned the location. So there's no ambiguity mm-hmm. about whether, seeing the, uh, whether they've seen the moon or not. And we're just going to turn around now because we've got some pictures of the moon and this picture is from East London, it's in Beckton, I can see it between the telephone lines there. And this picture is also from just outside of East London, a bit clearer, wow, beautiful. That this is, is from Dagenham, I can see it above the iconic chimney. This picture we have here is from Birmingham, I think from the group of people that we saw earlier with Uzma. This is the picture from Cardiff that Shaquille saw. And we can see that moon shape there is a kind of backward C shape. And this picture is also from East London, the clearest of them all. This picture is from East Ham. Thank you so much. That's the last picture. So a lot of the pictures we've had so far are from East London. If you're watching, please post your pictures in the comments. Please tell us where you've sighted the moon from. And I'm confident that we're going to get some great beautiful shots of the moon by the end of the evening today. Fantastic. Yeah, beautiful images there. Thank you so much for sending those in. Uh, Huge thank you to our moon sighters and to the New Crescent Society as well. Uh, Imad, are there any sort of final thoughts sort of as we sum up a really successful evening of moon sighting? My final thoughts are that uh, my final emotions are, I might say, I just feel so happy that people have seen the moon, that this tradition is being revived in the UK. I feel so proud to be working with the Royal Observatory Greenwich, the home of time itself, a place where time finds consensus. We Muslims in the UK are trying to find consensus about our calendar, and I can't think of a better partner in the world to work with. So we're so happy to be here with you today. Fantastic. Yeah, it's been such a pleasure. Uh, A huge thank you to the New Crescent Society, to you personally, Imad, as well. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. A huge thank you to our team at the Royal Museums Greenwich, and I suppose most of all, of course, to you at home for joining us this evening. Thank you so much. We wish you all a very happy Eid, and for this evening, very clear skies as well. Thank you so much, and we'll see you again next time.